This video is sponsored by DistroKid. Follow the VIP link in the description down below to get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music to the world. This old meme has been doing the rounds again recently, but does it tell the full story of side chaining? Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you will. The meme certainly demonstrates side chain compression with kick and bass. However, there are other forms of side chaining which don't involve a kick bass or even a compressor. I'm going to give you some examples later on, but before I do, let's just take a quick overview of what side chaining actually is. Side chaining starts off with a channel in your mix that you want to affect the sound of in some way. Now to make it easier for the rest of this video in the examples, I'm always is going to color these channels in green and we're going to affect the sound of this green channel using a plugin inserted into the channel now in this particular example i'm using a compressor but it doesn't have to be a compressor when we do use a compressor it's called sidechain compression now here's where the magic happens. We're going to affect the behavior of this compressor inserted into this green channel with a second channel colored here in blue. So the blue channel in this case is gonna trigger the compressor into action. However, it's actually going to be the green channel which is compressed. Now this is technically called an external side chain. There is another type of side chain which we're going to discuss later. However, this is the type of side chain which is used in the example in the meme. Let's see exactly how it works there. In this example, I happen to be using Studio One, but the same principles apply no matter what door you're using. Now with this classic example, I have a bass guitar here colored in green. Remember, that's the thing that we're actually going to change the sound of and I have a kick drum colored in blue now if we look at the waveforms at the top you can see that they're often played at exactly the same time the only difference is the bass guitar has a much longer note the kick has a short note with a sudden transient at the beginning. Now, because they occupy or make use of the same frequencies, those lower frequencies, the bass guitar can tend to mask the kick, sort of hiding it a little bit, making it less prominent. So what we want to do with our side chain is temporarily lower the volume of the bass guitar when the kick drum plays. And to lower the volume, we're going to use a compressor. Now I'm using the FabFilter Pro C compressor here, but this will often work with many other compressors. Of course, they do have to have a side chain capability. So the compressor is inserted onto the green channel because it's the bass guitar that we want to lower the volume of. But we send a signal using a send from the kick drum through to the compressor, and that's what triggers the compressor. That's what lowers the volume. So let's play the example and see that happening in action. So this is helping to make that kick a little more punchy. Now, there's a couple of important settings here. First of all, I have the attack set fairly quick. I wanna make sure that the compressor reacts to the sound of the kick almost immediately. Secondly, I have a short release time. Now you have to adjust this according to your particular piece of music, but I do wanna make sure that I hear the sustain of that bass note. So once that kick sound has died out, I wanna raise the volume back to normal for the bass guitar. And that's the basic principle, if you'll excuse the pun, of how side chain compression works with the kick and bass. Earlier, I mentioned that you don't have to use a compressor with side chaining. In this example, I'm using a gate, and it's applied to this synthesizer sound, which we can see here in green. But let's start off with the gate switched off so we can hear the original sound of the synth. Thank you. 
OK, I'm going to switch the gate on, but the gate's behavior is going to be controlled by this second channel here in blue, and this is a kick drum. So the sound of the synth is going to be gated, but it's going to be controlled by the kick. Let's have a listen to that. So you can hear every time the kick plays, the synth is gated out, so it's silent for that moment. Now it may be that you don't actually want to hear the sound of the channel which is triggering the effect. Now in order to turn it down, what we need to do is make sure that the send from that channel is a pre-fader send. Now this is indicated in yellow here in Studio One. In your door it may look a little bit different, but make sure that you have pre-fader send engaged and that you then turn the fader down on that channel. Let's have a listen now. So in other words, the kick, which we can't actually hear, is controlling the sound of the gate on the synthesizer. Let's finish off by turning on a filter plugin I have here and turning on some drums for fun to see how it may sound in the context of the beginning of a mix. In this example, our green channel, the channel that we want to affect the sound of, is actually a bus. And it's a bus with a reverb plugin inserted onto it. Now we have the sound of a vocal here on the blue channel, and it's being sent through to that bus. And that's how we're going to get this reverb on the vocal. And it happens to be a really huge sounding reverb. Let's have a listen. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand too close? Now it's nice to have that huge reverb sometimes. However, it does kind of get in the way of the main vocal itself while she's singing. It sounds kind of complex and confusing to listen to. So we actually want to lower the volume of the reverb while she is singing. And you've guessed it, for that we're going to use sidechain compression. I have a compressor inserted into the bus just after the reverb. I'm going to switch it on now. And I also have a send coming from that vocal going through as a sidechain to that compressor. Let's have a listen now. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand too close? And that kept you running? So we're still able to hear that nice huge reverb sound in the gaps between the vocals but now it's sounding a little bit less confusing to listen to, a little bit less sort of muddy. Now this is an interesting example to me because with this bus, we of course have the sound of the vocal and the reverb and that's you know accomplished with the reverb plugin, but we're suppressing it with another send from the vocal going to the compressor on the same bus. Sidechain compression is sometimes referred to as ducking. This is especially heard in the context of video where we may have the sound of a voice and some background music. In this example, the background music is colored here in green and by itself it sounds like this. And then we have the voice, which by itself sounds like this. Now may be a good time to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And if we listen to them both together, they sound like this. Now may be a good time to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Now, as you can hear, the volume of the music while I'm speaking is a little bit too loud. So how are we going to fix it? You've guessed it with sidechain compression. With the green channel, that is the music. I'm going to turn on this compressor, which I've got already set up um, with a sidechain from the vocal or the voice. Let's have a listen to this now. 
now may be a good time to like this video and subscribe to the channel. So as you can hear while I'm speaking, the music is ducked out of the way. The volume is lowered. Now my settings are a little bit different than my kick and bass example earlier on. For this one, I've got a much slower attack and a slower release. This is just so it sounds a little bit more natural. We wouldn't want the music to sort of very suddenly kind of disappear when I start talking. Now, before we talk about a really useful form of side chaining, which isn't quite as sexy, I'd like to remind you that if you follow the VIP link in the description down below to our sponsor, DistroKid, they're going to make it super easy for you to release your music to platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, Google Play, and you're going to get 7% off your first year of membership. Hidden away, even on the hardware version of this classic LA2 a compressor is a side chaining feature we haven't discussed so far because all of our examples so far have been external side chains but this compressor has an internal side chain feature now you won't see it labeled on the ui but it's being utilized by this control here hf high pass filter now we're going to get back to that in a moment but first of all let's have a listen to the acoustic guitar that i've applied this compressor to and as we're listening take a look at the needle which is indicating gain reduction and see particularly how it reacts to the lower frequency or bass notes of the guitar Now you can see that the compressor is being triggered disproportionately in some ways by the bass notes, the lower frequency notes. And that's really common with compression. And it's making the guitar sound a little bit unnatural, okay? Because that compression's kicking in so hard with those lower frequency sounds. So that's why we want to filter out some of the lower frequencies that the compressor can hear. It's We don't want to change the sound of what we can hear from the acoustic guitar. We still want to hear those lower frequencies, but we don't want the compressor to react to them so much. So compressors like this have a side chain in built where there's a different signal almost forked off to the side chain for the compressor to listen to when it decides how much to reduce the gain by. Now that is controlled on this particular compressor by the control we mentioned earlier, the high pass filter. So what I'm gonna do is play this acoustic guitar again, but I'm gradually going to lower the value of this high pass filter. You'll hear that the low frequencies are still there in terms of what we can hear, but the compressor reacts differently. Let's have a listen. So that's a much more natural sounding acoustic guitar than we had before. Now, just to make this a little bit easier for you to hear, I'm going to use a different compressor. I'm going to bypass this one and switch to Studio One's built-in compressor. That also has an internal side chain feature you can see here with a filter. So a similar type of thing. And we've got the filter control here. But the difference is with this compressor, we can actually listen to the side chain by switching this button on the listen button. So let's turn it to its default value and have a listen to this and I'll change the value. So you can hear I've got rid of all of the lower frequency information here, and this is what the compressor is hearing. However, we're still hearing this.
Which of the five forms of side chaining I've shown you in today's video are you most excited to make use of? Let me know about that in the comments down below. Also, let me know if there's a form of side chaining which I've missed here, which you regularly make use of. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.